So Project Spartan has a number of parts. Uh, first, it has a new rendering engine under the covers that's built to be compatible with how the web is written today. It has a new look and feel, which you see on the screen, that it fits right in with all this family of Windows 10 applications. And we're especially working on three significant new features to make you more productive on the web as you use Project Spartan. So I'm going to switch over for the last demo and let you take a look at Project Spartan running on the PC. Now, Project Spartan will not be in our very first Insider builds. It's going to come a little later, and it'll come to the phone a little after that. Now, I'm going to show you it only on the PC today, but it is coming to the phone. The first thing you'll notice here is the new UI is streamlined. It fits in with the design language of Windows 10, and you can see the focus is on the content on the page. Um, but what I want to do is just give you a, a taste of these three significant new features we're working on to help people be more productive. The first one is about how you can interact with the web, and in particular, how you might communicate with other people about the web. So, you know, sometimes web articles come out and people want to post them to Facebook or they want to talk to other people about them. There's a lot of interaction that happens with content on the web. And this happened to our team about two weeks ago. And it happened when this article posted on the internet. This article comes out, and you can imagine all of us are simultaneously horrified and kind of happy. Um, and so, of course, within our team, we communicated with each other about this article on the web, but we had Spartan. So we didn't simply send emails. Many of us had devices that work with pens or styluses, which I have here. So I'm going to switch into the first of these big three features, our note-taking mode. And you could imagine when I saw this, uh, I saw this and I said, oh, baby, you know, sometimes you guys don't get it right, but sometimes you do. So, you know, we saw this and we were excited and we communicated with each other by marking up the web directly. And in this case, you know, I'm using a stylus, but I could do it with just my finger if I don't have a pen handy. If I want to make a little smiley face to show just how happy I am, that's possible too. And so now we have this way of expressing our thoughts right on the canvas of the web. It was interesting because this article came out and a bunch of people speculated, oh, I hope Microsoft isn't only doing this for devices with touch and pen. We're not. Um, so let me show you how we're going to support the mode of communicating about documents that millions of people have been doing for years and years with Word. They can click anywhere and add a comment using their keyboard. Hmm, this is a good idea. Um, so you could imagine, as we saw this article, some people had touch devices, some didn't. Everyone could comment on it using whatever form of input they had. You know, if it's touch, then it's natural. If it's a keyboard, then it's familiar. And so once I've marked up this page, there's a bunch of things I can do with it, of course. What we've done is we've frozen the web page. And that means that the content that might change on it is, is sort of snapped in time, but the links are still alive. I can then share that whole page or save that whole page for myself with my markup. Or I can go over here, I'm going to grab this clipping tool, and I'm going to just pull out this particular segment. You can see there I could save it to my OneNote because I keep a bunch of notes on things as I browse the web when I'm planning trips and so on. I could copy it to the clipboard. Or I could come right up here and use the system's built-in system for sharing to share that with other people. I could share it on Facebook. I could share it on Twitter. I could share it through my email experience in a consistent way. And now I have a rich canvas for not only expressing my thoughts on the web, but for sharing them with other people as well. So that's the first of our three significant end user features. The second thing that we tried to do was focus on the action of reading. People are I mean, the predominant action on the web is reading. You're reading and reading and reading and reading. And we felt if we could make that just a few percentage points better, then we'd significantly affect the overall productivity of people on the web. So there are a few things we did. The first thing we did was we looked at how we could take and sort of standardize a great way to read sites on the web, which are variant in their level of complexity and so on. So here's an article on Bon Appetit. I'm going to switch into my reading mode right here, and you'll see we discoverably make available a standardized format way for you to read stuff on the web. And you can personalize this to your liking so that you have a way to experience the wide range of content out there on a the web in a way that might feel familiar to you. We didn't stop there. We also added a reading list right into the core browsing experience. And of course, this will show up on whatever device you have. Um, I can add items to the reading list, 
It's a mobile experience that goes to whatever device I'm using. And we do one more thing, which is that we'll take the content in your reading list and save it offline. So if you find yourself stuck on a flight with no Wi-Fi and your mobile device is with you, well, Spartan will deliver you content to read wherever you are. And then the last thing that we wanted to do was we wanted to make sure that we supported the broadest set of content that's out there on the web. So we built in support for PDF files. And you see right here, I have a sample PDF file. I can add that to my reading list. I can mark it up with notes in the note-taking mode. It'll be saved offline and so on. So we're really trying to ensure that the widest range of content on the web is available for people to read wherever they are. Okay, last thing. The third thing that we tried to do to make people more productive on the web was to give you a personal assistant to help you be productive on the web. So we're building Cortana right into Spartan. And the idea is that Cortana will show up at the right opportune moments to help you get things done. So there's some simple things she can do. So if I'm in my address bar and I'm curious about the weather, I can start typing weather, and Cortana will pop up and be helpful in simple situations like that. But because she knows you, she can help in more interesting and nuanced ways at times that might surprise you a little bit. So let's say it's my sister's birthday. It's not, but for demo purposes, let's imagine it's my sister's birthday. And her friends are having a surprise birthday party for her tonight. Remember my wife has that flight that's coming in that Cortana's tracking for me? Man, is my wife going to get here in time for us to make it to the party? I'm not sure. I might go to the Delta website to look up my wife's flight, but luckily... Cortana knows that I'm tracking a flight because she's learning things about me all the time. And she can save me time and effort by popping up as I'm about to navigate somewhere on the web with, with what might be an answer to a question that I have in mind. So that's yet another example of how Cortana can help out. Similarly, as I'm browsing the web, Cortana can be right there at my fingertips, ready to let me know things about the pages I'm looking at. So you can see here, my sister's party is going to be at this restaurant called Cuoco. Um, my wife is gluten-free, dairy-free, and I'm on a crazy diet for New Year's. And so we have this concern about a restaurant and what's on the menu, and I wonder, like, how am I going to get there from here? You notice when I visit the restaurant site, Cortana has popped up right here to tell me she knows about this place because, again, Cortana is scouring the Internet, learning about people and places and getting smarter all the time. Um, she's telling me she's got directions, hours, and more. When I click... She shows up right here within the web browser to give me details about this place. She's telling me directions from where I'm at right now, and I can make those available on whatever device I'm on. She's, she can book a reservation for me. She shows me the hours. I can read reviews and so on. Remember my concern about the menu? Well, Cortana's there to help, too. She knows where the menu for this restaurant is on the Internet. She makes it readily available. And if I'm curious about ingredients as I scan down this, I know what a lot of these things are. I'm not so sure about rapini. I can just right-click and ask Cortana, and she's right there with an answer. Luckily, Rapini, only 2.7 grams of carbs, so that'll be okay for me on my New Year's diet. That's a quick look at Project Spartan. It's a new implementation of a web browser.